Thank to you. Welcome to the Center for Conscious Living. We are a heart-centered spiritual community and we are welcoming everyone here this morning in love. We have a very special service planned for you today. And I would just like you all to sit back and relax and enjoy what we will be presenting to you this morning. We have several practitioners around the Zoom this morning. Our uh, second practitioner is Joanne Yevikevich, and she will be handling prayers for the week. So if you are in need of prayer or would like the practitioners to pray um, for you, please contact the office and we will make sure that Joanne gets those prayers. Our third practitioner is the beautiful Dr. Reverend Carol Lawson, um, who is coming to us from Houston, Texas this morning. And our pastoral support is Reverend Sherry Daves, who is coming to us from Arizona. Thank you. Um, Sherry will be posting everything that you need to know in the chat for this morning's service. So let's all just take a breath together and repeat after me. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and peace. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and joy. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and complete health. I open my heart to the universe, accepting the complete and fullness of God. And so I would like to bring up our first practitioner this morning, who is Haji Schreffler, and she will be doing our uh, invocation and our affirmation this morning. Hello and good morning, everyone. It's so wonderful to be with you. So let us let us anchor in and settle in and set the energetic tone for this morning in prayer. So if you'll join me in closing your eyes. And just setting that intention to remember the oneness that is present here. This one life that's breathing us. And even feeling in this very next breath, knowing that this is the divine. In this breath, this moment, this opportunity to come together in community. And so I know that the love that is the source of all life and all creation that brought us here this morning is absolutely flowing through every dimension of this service. I know that as we come together in this sacred circle from near and far, that we are fully present because God is here. God is breathing us, God is living us, God is rejoicing in this sacred community that is the center for conscious living. And I know that as we come together, we are strengthened for this sacred community is the place where we get to remember the truth of our being, where we get to lay down the fears, the illusions, the delusions of this world and stand in our truth, in our power, that there is only one love and one life, and that is this moment, this life, here and now. And so just settling in and breathing in the truth of our being that is God flowing through us, through this beautiful today service today. I know that every hand and heart that went into preparing today's service is absolutely the activity of God. That each one of us were called here this morning to be this beautiful tapestry of energy that ripples out into this world through this beautiful ceremony, the music, the words that are spoken, all of it is such a 
glorious dance of life. And so we get to bask in this glory, in this joy. And so I give thanks for Reverend Marlene for being the orchestrator of this morning's service, for Reverend Ute Maria Sedia for guiding us through, and for Reverend Dr. Carol Lawson, who is continues to be the guiding light for our sacred community orchestrating this morning. So how can we forget ginger coil, the music that is yet another expression of this one life? And so just with such gratitude, knowing that just showing up this morning was enough, that we are here, we are present, we are God in form and action, and we get to say yes to all of this glory and all of these blessings. And so knowing this truth for each one of us here today and knowing that as we know this for ourselves, that we are knowing it for all humanity and for this world. And so I release this word knowing that it is done in such perfection and such joy and love. And just join with me in saying, and so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Haji. And Haji will be uh, continuing with our affirmation this morning. Yes. So if you will join me in reading this morning. Taking a breath, breathing it in. There is one life. That life is God. That life is my life now. I consciously identify with the one presence and the one power that is operating in, around, and through me. And so it is. Thank you, Haji. So again, good morning to all of you. I am Reverend Marlene. I am the service minister here at the Center for Conscious Living today, while Reverend Paul is taking a much needed break. I believe he is on the ski slopes this morning. Um, so this morning we uh, have put together a beautiful service for you. It is called a Taze, and it is a chant style service of music, prayer, and contemplation. Um, this uh, particular tize is a gift to us from the Reverend Sidney Lehmanstein, um, who I met um, many years ago at an Anton conference, and she presented this tize as our closing uh, ceremony at the Anton conference. And, um, Reverend Carol and I were so moved by it that we approached her and she graciously gifted the service to us. All the music is written um, by Sydney. Um, Sydney presently uh, serves as the assistant minister at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. And um, this morning, the readings uh, will be presented by the beautiful Reverend Uta Maria Sedia, who comes to us from Chicago this morning. Thank you for getting up early. Um, and uh, Reverend Carol Lawson, who is in Houston, Texas. Uh, both uh, Reverend Uta Maria and Carol will be doing our readings. I also met uh, Reverend Uta Maria at an Anton conference many years ago. And we have all become fast friends. She is a beautiful presence. Um, she lives and breathes Emma Curtis Hopkins, and she is currently um, facilitating our um, Emma class on Wednesday nights. And of course, this service would not be um, complete without the fabulous Ginger Coyle, who is so lovingly pre uh, presenting our music this morning. So um, we will be hearing um, words from some of the founding teachers and the greatest way showers um, of the New Thought Movement. Um, and then we will be singing um, chants after each reading. And as we begin, it is important to release the outside world, to open yourself to spirit and to the presence of God, Turn off all the outside distractions and allow yourself to be fully present to the readings and the chants this morning. I invite you to empty your hands, 
to relax your minds and to open your hearts to the sacred vibration of truth. I invite you to rest in the gift of music and let it cleanse those places in consciousness where the dust of your everyday life has accumulated. So let's just take a nice deep breath and let's begin. Emma Curtis Hopkins has long been known as the teacher of teachers. She profoundly inspired and influenced all of what we regard today, the new thought movement. Her essay, The Radiant I Am, opens with these words. The listening disciple becomes a preaching apostle, standing at the center of being and looking outward over the world, instruction is received from every quarter. But who has told himself that all the objects he beholds and all their movements are but projections of his own judgment? He seems always to be a learner and a seeker till at the center of his consciousness, the fact is suddenly proclaimed that he himself produced the world as it appears. Then he no longer listens to information from without. He authorizes from within himself what he would see and hear and touch, even what he would know. And from the ninth statement of the radiant I am, I am the power of song, joyous song that steals in unquenchable smiling through the universe. I am the eternal smile. As I shed myself through the atoms and through the skin, the globes, they sing. I am the joyous song, unquenchable, unhinderable forever. No other sound but singing. No other voice but joy is heard from this day forth. Emma wrote, all the poise that I am, I radiate through the universe and all things feel the joy of adjustment. This is my ministry. This is my nature. I think this, I speak this, I write this, I live this. 
I am the power of heaven to every atom and every archangel. The world will persist in exhibiting before you what you persist in affirming the world is. This too is good. This too is God. This too is for me. And I demand to see the blessing in it for me. This too is good, this too is God, this too is for me, and I see my blessings now. This too is good, this too is God, this too Nona Brooks wrote, the practice of the presence of God is the whole of divine science. She moved well beyond her old rugged crossroots and proclaimed that we acknowledge but one source from which one finds all perfection in the true light of God. Light was Nona's emphasis and light was also her watchword. In Truth and Health, Fanny B. James stated that unfoldment is a great privilege. Each clearer vision expands our thoughts into fuller realizations of truth. The light grows clearer, our vision more and more illumined, sees in a new way.
The ideas that guided Charles and Myrtle Fillmore early on were found in traditions across the globe. Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islamic mysticism awakened in them, especially in Charles, the possibility of unifying spiritual practices, ideas, and wisdom. They co-founded Unity in 1889 as a healing ministry based on the power of prayer and the power of our thoughts to create our own reality. Charles wrote, we increase whatever we praise. The whole creation responds to praise and is glad. He also wrote, it's the law of spirit that we must be that which we would draw to us. If we would draw to us love, we must be love, be loving and kind we would have peace and harmony in our environment, we must establish it within ourselves. Charles Fillmore embraced Emma's 12 parts of the soul. He expanded and delighted in it. He also gave us this affirmation. I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm, energy, eager to do that which ought to be done by me today. Myrtle Fillmore learned early on about the power of prayer to heal her own health and life. These words of hers changed the 
the course of her life and led both her and Charles to become leaders and co-founders of a teaching they called Unity. I am a child of God and therefore I do not inherit sickness. Emily Cady taught that we are heirs to all wisdom so that we need not, through any lack of wisdom, make mistakes. We are heirs to all love so that we need no, no fear or envy or jealousy. We are heirs to all strength, all life, all power, all good. Emily Cady also taught the blessings and power of true forgiveness. She wrote, to forgive is to give for, to give some actual definite good in return for evil. When we give love in place of whatever seeming wrongs have occurred, we are channels for the divine itself.
Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science, author of the Science of Mind textbook, mystic, music lover, prolific writer, teacher, said these words, which sum up that which we know cornerstone of what he originally called science of mind and spirit. We are chemists in the laboratory of the infinite. What then shall we create? He used to say the teachings he offered were simple, but not easy. It was with clarity, conviction, and love that he presented the world what he knew to be. We have within us a power that is greater than anything we shall ever contact in the outer, a power that can overcome every obstacle in our life and set us safe satisfied and at peace, healed and prosperous in a new light, in, in a new life. He implored us to believe, to know, and to live in an active, active awareness of our innate divinity. All the power in the universe is with you. All the power of the universe is with you. Feel it, know it, and then act as though it were true. You are guided by the same intelligence and inspired by the same imagination which scatters the moonbeams across the waves and holds the forces of nature 
in its grasp. This last chant is based on one of uh, Ernest Holmes' meditation found in the Science of Mind textbook. I keep the promise. <clears throat> it's page uh, 517 if you want to look it up sometime. I keep the promise. I shall keep the promise I made to myself. I shall never again myself that I'm poor, sick, weak, nor am not lie to myself more, but shall daily speak the truth to my inner soul, telling it that it is wonderful and marvelous, that it is one great cause of all life, truth, power, and action. I shall whisper these things into my soul until it breaks forth into songs of joy with the vision of its limitless possibilities. I assure my soul. I shall keep the promise I have made to myself. I will whisper truth to my inner soul. I am one of God. I shall keep the promise I have made. And after we whisper, we listen, and we will find the same words back from our soul. And so it is. Amen. And let's all just take a collective breath together. Mm, giving great thanks for the presence of God. And now, if you will read the blessing of our offering along with 
the beautiful Reverend Sherry Daves. Mm. Yes, thank you, Reverend Merlene. Um, yeah, and as we continue to hold tenderly within us this sacred space that has been nurtured here this morning, perhaps as we open our eyes and begin to take in those of us around us and extend that sacred to one another. And join me in blessing our offering and offering our blessing. Thank you, God, for this abundance that is mine to share. I bless this gift and give it to thee in gratitude and joy, knowing that as I give, I do receive. Amen. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so How blessed are we to have this beautiful community of lights, this beautiful musician known as Ginger Coyle with her angelic voice, the beauty of our founding minister, Dr. Reverend Carol Lawson, and the beautiful Reverend Uta Maria for bringing this beautiful service to us this morning. Grateful that all of you are here and I feel abundantly blessed to be part of this community. So just some things to keep you up to date of what's going on in our beautiful community. If you are interested in learning more about Emma Curtis Hopkins, this is the last week for you to uh, join the beautiful class that uh, Reverend Uta Maria is facilitating for us on Wednesday evenings. Um, just let the office know. That would be me. Um, any of our upcoming classes or events, uh, you can find them on our website with all the descriptions and dates and times and all those things. So check back often on our website. If you're interested in doing practitioner training, uh, let me know so that we can make sure you have all the requirements that you need. If anyone is interested in being part of the Black, Indigenous, and People of Colors group, uh, let the office know. Haji is spearheading that uh, new group, and I will um, forward the information to Haji. The men's group is meeting this Monday. If you are a man and are interested, let us know. Uh, our beautiful community is participating in the 2022 Holistic Health and Healing Expo, which is being held at the Aloft Hotel in Mount Laurel. And uh, we need some volunteers in two-hour increments. It is scheduled for Sunday, March 20th from 11 to 5. And if you're interested in serving and helping your community out, let us know. And you don't, if you're not particularly well-versed or 
are afraid to speak to others, that should not discourage you. We will have lots of handwritten material to hand out, but just being your glorious presence uh, will be um, welcome. Anyone that wants prayer, needs prayer, would like prayer, please remember that the practitioners here at the Center for Conscious Living are always eager to pray for you. And we are a lovely group. And all you need to do is call the office or email the office or text the office with what you need prayer for. And we will be happy to pray for you for the, we usually pray in weekly increments. And also this, um, this year, the Interfaith Homeless Outreach Council is again sponsoring its annual fundraiser. It is a mall walk for the homeless, and that will be on Sunday, February 27th, which is next Sunday, at the Voorhees Town Center, the Macy's East Entrance in Voorhees. If you are interested, contact the office or contact uh, Marty Levin. He is graciously stepping up to be our team coach. And if you go to our website and look at our gallery of pictures, you will see some pictures from the wall walkers the last time that it was presented in person. It was a fun event. And we had quite, quite a few members of the community participate uh, in that event. So as most of you know, um, on second and fourth Sundays, we are doing um, in-person services. And it is our goal to eventually merge completely to YouTube. So for those of you that are not YouTube savvy as of yet, our um, computer guru, Scott Pysik, who uh, those of you that have come in person have actually met, has put together a YouTube vid uh, video showing how to use YouTube. I will be posting the link on the website so that you can go through that video, watch that video so that um, you will become more familiar about how to access um, our live stream service on YouTube. And the one thing that, last thing that came across my desk this week was um, from, um, a modern mystic that I met many years ago um, who lives in Florida and she has um, let us know or let me know that on Tuesday this week at 12.22 p.m. there's going to be a prayer for peace for the Ukraine. So if you are called to that, um, you are encouraged to go to unify.org, that's U-N-I-F-Y.org backslash love to register. Um, it's going to be a collective prayer um, for the Ukraine uh, on uh, Zoom. Uh, Red Tent is on March 5th. Thank you, Miss Kathy Miller. And I am just grateful that you all um, are present here today for um, this very special Tizay service. And again, I would like to thank Ginger and Reverend Carol and Reverend Uta Maria for um, being the presence of this service. Um, Next, we're going to invite up Miss Bobby Miles, who is doing our season for not for peace and nonviolence um, piece uh, this week. Her topic is what is yours to do. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Continuing in the theme of this service and in celebration of the season of peace and nonviolence, I volunteer to ask the question, on behalf of all of us, what is mine to do? Immediately that brings to mind to me the song that we share together each week at CCL. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. 
Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. That's so desirable to do and it sounds wonderful, but how can we establish it within so that we do it more consciously, more consistently? Two quotes came to mind to me on this topic. Uh, the first one from uh, a Jewish sage by the name of Hillel. Uh, he said, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? But if I am only for myself, who am I? And if not now, when? And of course, from Martin Luther King, the quote from darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Bearing witness to our own emptiness before the many challenges we face in the world, in our personal lives and in the larger community, we can react from our ego selves, which is the reactive way, or we can allow ourselves to be guided, guided to be peaceful by pausing and stepping back from the reactive thoughts and fiery feelings of the moment. Through stillness, we can locate the place of movement which springs from inspired, peace-filled action. When we act from that place, we know we are being used for a purpose greater than our own, beyond the constraints of our own limited reactions. So during this week, give it a try. Let's all give it a try to notice when some discomfort arises about ourselves, another, or something in the world, and allow attention to fall on that which pulls you out of your heart and instead of reactive, reflexively turning away from what's uncomfortable, take a breath and observe. As Mary Reed says, which I love that phrase um, with cherishing awareness, attend to what hurts and be with it, seeking coherence between your heart and mind. And in doing so, be willing to open to the question what is mine to do here? Open to the wisdom of the heart, to the arising of love's voice. So let's take a moment together now to close our eyes and ask the question, what is mine to do? Sink into the silence within the field of divine presence and observe if any problem or concern is calling for your attention today. If so, observe it with kindness and wait for the wisdom of your heart to provide guidance on the question, what is mine to do? A moment of silence. So beautiful beings and in the words of Dr. King, the time is always right to do what is right. This week, let's ask ourselves, what is the best right action here and now? Let's inquire, what would love do? And in closing, let's all say that together the affirmation that we have shared around the peace pole behind me <laughs> that is shared by mil millions Please repeat after me, may peace prevail on earth. Thank you all. Lovely, Bobby, just lovely, thank you. So perfect to go with this morning's service. And um, Ginger is going to sing the peace song. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that is made.
step I take, let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Beautiful. And now our first practitioner, Haji Scheffler, will close us out with our concluding affirmation. Yes. Oh, wow. Just such a glorious morning. So join with me in sharing this affirmation, affirming it, feeling it, breathing it in, and letting it radiate out. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. It is this thing called life. Life is in my body, life is in my mind, life is in my feelings, life is in all of my activities. I receive it, I share it, I am it, and I accept it just the way that it is. So thank you, life, and accepting all of these gifts and blessings we say. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so it is. And so it is. Thank you, everybody, for attending our um, first today service. Um, and I'm hoping that you all enjoyed it um, because we would love to be able to do it again for you, hopefully next time in person. I just want to say thank you for inviting me 